We got sound now? Is the little meter going up and down? No good. We've had sound issues today. We got one, one problem fixed and now there we go. Yeah, that was pretty good singing though this time. That was pretty decent. <laughs> All right. Um, announcements Tuesday, this Tuesday, September 8th, Ladies Fellowship. And that's at 6 o'clock on Tuesday. Then next Sunday evening, next week, we will have a director's deacon's meeting after evening service just to go through the monthly uh, last month's finances and then talk about ministries and things like that. And just a normal uh, monthly meeting there. Then the youth retreat, December 28th through 31st at Southland. Cost is $140, um, but I know we did some fundraisers this year. I have to see what we got in the, in the uh, fundraising category there, what's, what's left in that. But it's December 28th through 31st for 7th through 12th graders. And if you're interested, I'm going to be registering in the next two weeks. We'll get registered. So please let me know so we can get you, get you registered. And that is... That's coming up, that'll be the end of the year, but the registration's coming up pretty quick here. All right, those are the announcements. I think that's everything, unless, is there anything I missed that y'all know of? All right. All right, Genesis chapter 4. We're going to talk about, uh, talk about Cain, just a, a great character in the Bible to... To emulate. <laughs> Genesis chapter 4. So Cain shows up in Genesis 4. He's mentioned in 1 John and he's mentioned in Jude. And Cain is the, here's just some, some facts that maybe you hadn't thought about. Cain is the first man born in the world. His very first man born. Uh, Adam, remember, Adam's created out of dust. Eve's created out of Adam's rib. And Cain is the first man that's born in the world. And turns out to be, unfortunately, a murderer. And uh, kind of goes right along with everything we've seen from Genesis 3 up to here, Genesis chapter 4, let's read a few verses, and uh, we're, we're going to describe, I'm going to describe to you what it, what it means, what the Bible means by the way of Cain, because that's mentioned up in Jude, but let's get, let's get the, the history down here. Genesis chapter 4, verse 1, it says, and Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. There's first man born in the world, Cain. She again bears brother Abel. Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted, and if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, it came to pass when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel and slew, Abel his brother, and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not, am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out of this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid." 
And I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord, and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived in bare Enoch, and he built a city, and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. And unto Enoch was born Irad, and Irad Mahujiel, and Mahujiel begat Methusiel, and Methusiel begat Lamech. All right, I'm going to stop there, and that's the history that you have of Cain. And everything that's said after this about Cain in 1 John and in the book of Jude references this, this history that, that uh, you just read there. And there's three things, three elements really that define Cain and Cain's way that's described in Jude. And I'll, I'll, you don't have to go there, I'll just give you the verse. But in Jude verse 11, the Bible says, Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain. The way of Cain. And that's, that's the subject matter that we're going to talk about this evening. The way of Cain. Three things about the way of Cain and... Uh, And we'll describe them to you, but let's pray first, and then we will talk about these things. Father, I pray that you'd help us this evening. I pray that you'd feed your flock, um, that you would uh, give us what we need out of your words. I thank you for thank you for your words, and uh, those that are out traveling. Lord, pray you give them safety, and um, Lord, for those that are sick, that you would heal up their bodies and. Uh, anybody watching from home, um, Lord, I pray you'd, you'd bless them for watching. I pray they'd get what they need from you. And I thank you for each soul that's here tonight. I pray you'd bless each soul for being here and uh, just, just feed us from your words. We need it. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. The way of Cain. So Jude says, when he, when he writes, he says, Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain. And uh, John's going to say something else about Cain, that he was of that wicked one and slew his brother and, and all that kind of thing. We'll get to that verse in a little bit. But there's three, three elements that really dis- define this, the, the attributes of Cain's life. The first, thing, the first thing that defines the way of Cain, Cain is the, the, the quintessential just being the firstborn man in this world, in one generation, sin ha- has come to its, its full potential. I mean, in, in one generation, I, I imagine Adam and Eve, when this happens, they, they regret, I'm sure they regretted it before, but now they really regret bringing sin into the world. And now it has, it has come to full potential in, in their firstborn son, and Cain persecutes, he kills his brother because his brother is, is right with God and he's not, and so uh, th- there's three things, and I'll just, I'll give them to you real quick and then we'll, we'll develop them a little bit, but the first thing is the way of Cain, it's, it's persecution of the faithful, uh, he, he is envious uh, of his brother Abel, and you read that almost all through the Bible, that when, when, you, when you get to Jesus Christ, the Bible says that the Pharisees, for envy, they delivered him. They, they, were, they were envious of, of the Lord Jesus Christ's relationship to God and his, his, his uh, fe- fellowship with the Father, and the Bible says in John, the book of John, it says for envy they delivered him. They, they, were, they were envious of him just like Cain was. And that's why Jude says what he says. He says they've gone in the way of Cain. This, this is a mark, this is a distinguishing factor of Cain. This, this envy and this jealousy toward the righteous and, and uh, towards someone that has a relationship with God that, uh, that you don't have. And so Cain, persecution of the faithful, that's one. Number two, this, the second thing is the way of Cain is, is, is being eternally lost. I guess you could put it that way. 
One of the things that happens after Cain kills Abel is he has no place to go. Uh, the Lord tells him, look, you've, you've shed your brother's blood and now the earth isn't going to accept you. And everywhere you go, you're just going to be a, 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 a homeless. I mean, you're just going to be a vagabond. There's no place for you now. And you'll see that at the end of the Bible, that's, that's one of the, the factors, that's one of the characteristics of lost people at the, at the judgment, at the last, all that kind of thing, that when, when the Lord gathers everything up and sorts things out and all that kind of thing, when it's all gathered up and all sorted out, the, the, for a sinner... He, he finds out there's just no place for him. He has no place, that there's no place for him. And Cain finds that out here, there's just no place for him. The third thing, which is, it almost sounds contrary to the second thing we just mentioned. But Cain goes out and dwells in this place called Nod. He has children and he ends up building this city. And the third thing is this. Well, if you, if, you're, if you build a city, according to this world, you're probably pretty successful. If you, if you have a city named after you, it means you are something in this world. Cain's, the way of Cain is interesting in that this, not only is, is, he's lost, he, he persecutes and he hates the faithful, but he also has this success in the world that's just without God. He, ha- he has this, um, I, I guess you could say, and we'll develop it more probably next week or so. But he has this, it's the appearance really, what it is, is the appearance of success without God in it. He goes out and builds a city, or his or son, and names the city after his son. And that's a, that's a pretty big accomplishment for somebody in the world I means one thing build a build a building or build a uh, I don't know a business but to build a city that's something else that's that's pretty pretty big deal um, so let's let's develop these as you got the outline you understand and where we're going with it there may not be too much to add to any of these but uh, let, let's let's go back over them and we'll develop them a little bit number one The way of Cain is persecution of the faithful. Uh, I mentioned it last week, but in verse 3 of Genesis chapter 4, the Bible says, In the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And like I said, it appears that Cain for a while is, is carrying on in the right way. But then... Something goes, something's not right with him. I don't know if he gets tired of doing what he's doing. I don't know what the explanation is, but the phrase, the process of time means time had passed. He had been doing things one way, and then he just stopped doing them that way. And it revealed what the testimony from the Lord is. It revealed what he actually was. That, that was. It was revealing what he actually was. So the way of Cain, the first thing is going to be it's the persecution of the faithful because Abel continues to do the right thing. Continue, he understands, like we've said past couple of weeks, but he understands I, I, can't, I can't have fellowship with God if there's not a sacrifice involved. And so Abel continues to bring a sacrifice and in doing so, Cain sees that Abel is, is accepted by God, and he gets frustrated, he gets mad, he gets envious, he gets jealous, and he kills, he kills Abel. Look over in 1 John chapter 3. Here's the verse in 1 John that describes this. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 12. 1 John chapter 3 verse 12. First John 3.12 says, well, 11 for the context. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, 
Is, is there a bigger uh, discrepancy than that? I don't, I don't want you to love like Cain. <laughs> Obviously not. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Here's the reason. Because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. So that, that was the whole reason Cain did what he did. Because Abel did the right thing and Cain did the wrong thing. And Cain was mad at Abel for doing the right thing. And so he kills Abel. Uh, it, it is, it is the, the envy, the jealousy, the wrath, the, the hatred towards someone who's doing the right thing. And the, the Pharisees, they, they do the same thing with Jesus Christ. They, they treat him horribly, end up killing him because he's, he's doing the right thing. Um, and that's why Jesus Christ is going to call them vipers and things like that, a bunch of snakes. But uh, that, that spirit, that uh, characteristic, that, that description of, of these, these, these folks is, is uh, exactly like Cain. And it started way back here at the beginning of the world. I mean, this, this is the same thing that's gone on for a long time. Just the, the ones doing wrong hate the ones doing right. And if you're not careful, you, you see this creep up in your own life where, where you'll, you'll see someone serving God in a way that uh, you wish you were serving God in that way, and, uh, but you're not, and you wish you were, and what will happen is instead of being encouraged by them, you'll be mad at them. You get, you get frustrated with them, and you'll see them maybe benefiting, maybe, maybe just enjoying their Christian experience, their Christian fellowship, and their, their, their life, and their fellowship with God, and their service to God, and their out and about, and their, their actively in service. And if you're not careful, you'll watch that. And this, this whole way of Cain, this, this stuff is in everybody. And uh, it, it's the, instead of being encouraged by someone serving God, you treat it like Cain does, and you just get mad at him, and you get frustrated with him, and, and you, you, there's enmity there, there there's a battle there, there's a, an inward battle there. You, you, don't want to, you don't want to be close to him, you don't want to, uh, you, you, just, you just, there's hatred there. That's, that's what Cain did, that's exactly what Cain did. Um, in, instead of just getting the thing right, he just hated Abel, and so he kills Abel. And that's the testimony in 1 John chapter 3. This is, this is a, the man that slew his brother. And why did, he sl- why did he slay him? Why did he kill him? Because his own works were evil and his brothers were righteous. That was, the, that was the whole thing. So that's the first point. The way of Cain, it's persecution of the faithful. And why, why do you persecute the faithful? Well, because your own works are evil and their works are right. I mean, that's, that's, uh, that, that's it. That's Cain. And like I said, if we're not careful, that, that's our attitude towards folks who serve the Lord in ways that we don't. Instead of it being encouraged or encouraging them, what we do is we get mad and we get frustrated and we lash out and we get angry and we get bitter about it. And why am I not? And, and you know the reason. You know the reason all this is doing, all this is happening within you. It's because you're not doing the things you're supposed to be doing. So that's the way of Cain. Second thing is. Cain is, 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 is just eternally lost. He's just, he has no, no place. And when I read this, I'll tell you the way I think about it when I read verses 9 through 15 or so. Um, it almost reads like the earth is this thing in itself. And it's not necessarily that the earth is uh, uh, the Lord is cursed Cain, but it's, it's almost like the earth has just swallowed up the blood of Abel as a record against Cain. It's kind of interesting. We'll read it. Verse 9, the Bible says, And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? <laughs> you know, what, are, what are you asking me for? There's a, there's a real good attitude to have with God. 
And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And now thou art cursed from the earth. And it's almost like the Lord doesn't, he isn't the one cursing. It's almost like just that's, that's the progression. That's the natural, I, I guess, the natural progression of what you've done. You've spilled blood. You've murdered this man. And now his blood's in the earth. And now I, 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 I can hear the blood crying out from the earth. And uh, I, can, I, I know it's there. I know what, what's happened here. And, and now the earth is going to reject you. And I say that because you have some interesting verses in things like Numbers where the Lord says about the land, he says, for, for the sins or for the murders, for the, for the way the culture is in the land, he says the land spews out the people. It just, it just it's had enough. It just like vomits out the people because it just had enough of the sin. And, and it's interesting the way the, the Lord words that. It's almost like he's not... It's not directly cursing them. It's just, this is what's happening whenever you do this. So he says, verse 11, Now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee your strength, and a fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. So he's just lost. Where is he going to go? How is he going to eat? How is he going to live? So he's brought this thing on himself, and now he has no... No place to go. He has, he has no, there's no, there's no home that he has anymore. Verse 14, look at what he says. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth. <laughs> if you're driven out from the face of the earth, where do you go? <laughs> you, you don't have any place. Behold, thou hast driven me out from this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid. So not only driven out from the face of the earth, but driven away from God's face. And I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. And the Lord hears that, and it's interesting. I don't, I don't know why the Lord does this, but he responds to that, that hopeless case and he sets a mark on Cain and he says, all right, if anyone finds you to kill you, then there'll be, there'll be retribution towards them seven times. I don't know why he does that, but uh, uh, that's what the Lord does. Um, a couple, couple of notes here. In verse 10, it's almost, like, it's almost like a crime scene investigation. When I read that, verse 10, he says, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. Um, I, th- I think about this, the, the investigation of a crime scene and, and they're taking, taking um, clues and, and, and just evidence and watching you know, where the blood is and you've got DNA evidence and things like that. It's almost like that. It, it, the Lord says that the, the blood is speaking to me just like it would a detective or something like that and I know something's happened here and so tell me about it Cain what 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 did you do where's Abel and uh I know the Lord knows where he is and all that but uh he gets gets Cain pinned down there but Cain the second point of all this is Cain is just eternally lost he doesn't have any place to go uh, he doesn't he doesn't have any any um home now He's, he's just a vagabond and a fugitive, he says. And then the Lord puts some special protection on him at verse 15. I don't know why, but uh, it doesn't change the fact that he's just lost. And that, that's the case with anybody that is, that is unrighteous. Uh, when the Lord finally sorts everything out and, and uh, puts everyone in their place, uh, one of the things you read in Revelation is for a certain group of people, there's just no place for them. There's no, there's no, you can't be in heaven. You can't be with the Lord. You can't be in Jesus Christ's kingdom. You can't, there's just not a place for you in God's creation anymore. And so that's where the lake of fire comes in and things like that. So it's number two, the way of Cain is just lost. He's just eternally lost. And the third thing is this, after this, after the Lord puts a little special protection on him, Cain goes out to a land, 
called Nod in verse 16. And he goes out away from the presence of the Lord. That, that's noted in verse 16. Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch. And he built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. And unto Enoch was born Irad, Irad, Mahujiel, and so on and so forth. So Cain leaves the presence of the Lord. He has children. His children build this city. Enoch builds this city and, uh, or, or is instrumental in building it, which is quite a, quite a, quite a feat in this world. And he calls the city after Enoch's name, calls it Enoch. And so here's the point, the way of Cain. The way of Cain has, a, has, this, it has this appearance of success. He builds a city, but in verse 16, the first thing that's mentioned is he goes out from the presence of the Lord. The Lord's not with him in any of this. But he does these things. And in the world's eyes, he, he is successful in what he does. In God's eyes, God's just nowhere near what he's doing. And you're going to see more of that as, as, as Genesis goes on here. But there's going to be this, this, I guess you would just say, there's this appearance of success that's just without God. God's nowhere near any of it. But there's buildings, there's commerce, there's business, there's activity. There's, there's things going on, but there's just no God involved in any of it. So to the world, it appears to be successful. But the reality is, you, I guess you could say in the world, it is successful in the world, but in God's eyes, he's not anywhere near it. So there's this appearance of success without God. Um, you know, one of the things, one of the things that makes me think of when, uh, when, uh, when we mention this, <clears throat> success without God or the appearance of success without God is the Pharisees, the, even Paul, even Paul is this way. He says, he says for a period of in his life, he profited in the Jews' religion. And he, he made a good living at what he did. And he, he was very successful in what he did. And I imagine the Pharisees, Jesus Christ said they loved to sit in Moses' seat and all that stuff. These, these guys were influential and, and notable people in the community. And they were, they were by all the world's standards, successful. The problem is, and there, there was no, God was nowhere near any of them. That's Cain. I mean, there's, there is, and that is, that is probably one of the, the most seductive and the most blinding things in this world is that, that appearance of success without God. And I've, I've told this story before, y'all have heard it before, uh, but there's other variations of it um, with folks, but the reality is it, it, it is it is very difficult. It's very difficult to convince someone of their need of God when they have two cars in the driveway, when they got a two-story house, when they when they're just they, they got everything they need in the fridge. And, you know, everything seems to be, all the kids are doing good in college and, uh, you know, everything seems to be going good and trying to convince them that, look, if you die without Jesus Christ, you go to hell. But trying to convince someone of life, their, their life, their success doesn't have or their appearance of success or, or their real success in this world. You could just say it is real success in this world. But it isn't real success with God. And so Cain, I mean, Cain has real success in this world. The reality is, from God's perspective, it, it, it eventually is just the appearance of success, but it's not, it's not going to last. And that's, that is so true of 
I mean anybody, anybody that is, has some measure of wealth and, and uh, just doesn't feel like they have any needs. And you try to convince them that you, you need Jesus Christ. And the question comes up, what do I need Jesus Christ for? I, I have a good job. My kids seem to be doing good in school. I have transportation. I live in a nice house. Answer me and tell me what I need Jesus Christ for. Well, in this world, you have what you need. But this world has an expiration date, and eventually you'll be in a coffin somewhere. And your soul will be either, either in hell or it will be with the Lord, one, one or the other. But trying to convince people that they are not just their bodies is, is something else. You know, that's, that's something else. So Cain has this, this appearance of success, or you could say he has real success in this world just without God. He leaves the presence of God. He becomes successful. He builds a city. He has his, the city is named after his son. That's pretty, that's pretty notable. But when it comes to where is God in all this, nowhere. He's, he's nowhere in this. So the way of Cain is, is very, it's very, it's, it's seductive in that, that sense. It's number one, it's persecution of the faithful. It's finding someone who's doing right while you're doing wrong. And instead of you being encouraged to do right, you get angry about it. You get mad at him. That's the way of Cain. Second thing is the way of Cain is just eternally lost. There's, there's, there's wandering and there, you find out at the end there's just no place for him. There's no place for him. But kind of, kind of uh, on the heels of that, though, in this world, there's going to be a measure of, of success with Cain. It's just not going to last very long. But there's going to be a measure of success with him. And I guess you could put it this way, like we've said, he has the, the appearance of success just without God. And uh, once all that, all that stuff in this world reaches its expiration date, once Cain dies, I mean, he realizes that there's just, there wasn't that much value. Like Jesus Christ says, what, what, what will a man give in exchange for his soul? What if, he, what if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Well, that's, that's something to answer. That's something to answer. I mean, he, he's, he's, he's going to find out his soul was much more valuable than all the stuff he had. So that's the way of Cain. Three things. Persecution of the faithful, eternally lost, but there's an appearance of success that just doesn't have God in it. That's the way of Cain. And that, that's Cain. And you, you've got three places in your Bible where Cain's mentioned, Genesis 4. Uh, 1 John chapter 3 and Jude 11. And that's, it's almost like it just kind of comes full circle. You start at the beginning here in Genesis 4 with Cain and, and at the end of the Bible in 1 John and Jude, right before Revelation, Cain's mentioned again. It's almost like you've just come full circle. This is, this is the same thing that's been going on for a long time. Gone the way of Cain. So that is the way of Cain. And that's the history of it, and that's Cain right there. Let's pray, and we will be dismissed. Father, I pray it's been helpful. Um, thank you for putting these words in your book. Thank you, for, thank you for salvation in Jesus Christ. Thank you for the righteousness that you give us freely in Jesus Christ. And, Lord, thank you for each soul that's here this evening. And for those watching, I pray that you'd bless them as well. And um, those that will watch, that you'd bless them as well. And we'd all get what we need out of, out of these verses. Um, Cain is, is the typical, I mean, the quintessential man. I mean, he's the first man that's born, and this, this is his life. And it really represents a lot of people's lives. And uh, Lord, I pray that if anybody 
can relate to this and realizes they're not saved, I pray they'd, they'd, they would get saved. they trust Jesus Christ and get saved. And uh, instead of being angry towards the righteous and angry towards those doing right, they would be encouraged to do right and get right with God. And I thank you again for the Bible. And I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You are dismissed.